What's up guys, Fuman here, welcome back to another video. So, welcome to 2019, and as usual, I like, crawl on a bit late. So I've been taking a break from posting videos, mainly because um, I've been just figuring out a lot of stuff, going through a, bit, a few um, uh, transformations, uh, mainly specifically this time pertaining to success and how I have to get used to, um, you know, moving from one one paradigm of life to another and its, and its, uh, and its difficulties. So I'll probably make that into a separate video. But for all those people that thought that I relapsed, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did, um, but uh, since I since I relapsed, I promptly started again the next day. I'm currently on no vape day 13, so this is I it's around about just the pre Christmas time, and as you can imagine, being in retail at Christmas is hell. And uh, I think many people have seen the videos. Mainly, this happens in America, whereby you have people basically being trampled, and sometimes people die because everyone just wants to get the next latest Hoover. So it wasn't that bad for me, but it was still the same thing, which is a massive rush of people worked like more or less solidly throughout December. So uh, because of that, I sort of snapped. That's still not, not, that's still not an excuse. I mean, arguably if I did have some, some other sort of um, contingency, contingency measures, like for example, you know, not um, you know, going to the gym more or, you know, taking some certain supplements. But I just got into that to that mode whereby it's like work, 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 work to the point where it's like I don't really care about anything else at the moment. I just want Christmas to be over. Yeah, maybe one puff won't, won't be so bad. And I ended up buying a six milliliter bottle of vanilla custard and just going to town on it. I felt sick, although I felt so sick afterwards because many the my lungs were just so used to not having to deal with nicotine that once all but once the you know once my once it was put back into my system all of a sudden my body was like what the hell was this so i got really i got really 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 lightheaded because i was trying to take the same dosages that i had before um i started to get really kind of dizzy and i just felt afterwards like crap and it reminded me then exactly why cigarettes are so addictive um, I know we're talking about vaping, but cigarettes more specifically is that first of all, it makes you feel like shit. And then after, and then once you feel like shit, you start to want a cigarette again. So then you'll smoke and then you'll feel like shit again. And I think, I think it's the same thing with vaping as well. It's that like vaping will restrict the amount of oxygen that your brain gets as well as deplete your brain, body and brain of vital nutrients. Not that many, but only, only trace amounts. And if you do this for long enough, eventually the body starts to operate with less systems. So that's to say that considering the fact that every single process in the body requires oxygen or almost every single one, the less oxygen you have in the system, then the more negatively you are going to be affected. And slowly, one by one, the alveoli in your lungs begin to take in less and less oxygen. And uh, they start to, sometimes the tar will actually build up. Although in vaping's case, you don't actually get tar, but you do get this weird residue that I tend to cough up sometimes. And some people may actually relate to this is that sometimes I, if I've been vaping a lot, what I'll do is like the next morning, I, if, I, if, if I spit into the sink, like in the morning, it will look like the exact color of the vape juice that I was having. And it's like, that was, that was your body basically pulling it out of your system and slowly coughing it up. And I remember when I was first of all, um, first starting to try and quit, it was more, it was like, okay, you know, I'm just, I'm just slowly coughing up this stuff, you know, you know uh, for, for a few days afterwards. And I, I used to call them lung cookies used to be a lot worse whenever I used to quit smoking. I used to literally cough up like tiny bits of tar and you know, it's gonna be surrounded in the mucus from your lungs and ah, nasty. So that's over. Now, um, what I really wanted to talk about, uh, and just one last note on that, like after I relapsed, it literally took me 24 hours. And the first, the second time I've tried this next cycle, it's actually been a lot easier. Um, it's, been, it's been a lot easier for me to get back on it. The hardest part of it is already in the past. So now it's just a question of carrying on from to, you know, in through to the next week. But anyway, what I wanted to talk about was peer pressure because um, as it's the New Year's, um, I, I'm like, as it is, because as it is New Year's and Christmas, I think it's um, important to remember that depending on, especially if you're trying to do some sort of a lifestyle change, it's very hard to not get caught up in the whole celebratory thing and, you know, end up end up relapsing or, you know, reverting back to your old self. Now, this is only for people who are really interested or, or are in a phase of their life where they really want to transform parts of themselves um, and, you know, moving on into the next life. Because what you'll find, and I've talked about this a lot, is that it's very hard to enact any sort of change or transformation when you're surrounded by people or environments or 
situations or circumstances that kept you in that same environment in the first place, that kept you in those same mind patterns, that kept you with those same addictions. And nowhere is that ever more true as it, as it is on New Year's, because on, on New Year's Day or, or Christmas as well, um, you have people eating the same food, you have people celebrating, you know, this is how we celebrate Christmas. Oh, you know, there's parties everywhere, you know, come on, you know, go party, do this and do that. And sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming. And I was thinking back to um, when I was first trying to quit. So, you know, when I was first trying to quit alcohol, when I was first trying to quit, you know, cigarettes, you know, stuff like that, is that I kept relapsing for the simple fact that I kept on giving into the crowd. I kept eating, I kept eating the food that was offered to me. I kept, I kept drinking the booze that was offered to me. I kept taking tokes, with, you know, that were offered to me. And I kept snapping and I kept buying stuff that, that, that I didn't need to buy because while I'm going to hang out with a lot of smokers and I don't want to sit there asking for cigarettes and I don't want to have to sit there and be like, because I knew that my willpower would snap if I went and I hung out with loads of smokers, you know, I, you know at a party or something. Um, my willpower would snap after a while. So it's like, look, I might as well, if I'm going to go out, I might as well just buy some more fags. So I ended up relapsing again and again. And you get this almost like guilt. And this, this needs its own video in like yeah, anyway, just to be talk about how to overcome guilt and peer pressure is that um, that peer pressure is one of the main things that really holds most people back. And uh, it is that peer pressure that once you can really overcome it, then you can really affect change. Because like I said before in my previous videos, no one wants you to be free. It's a very weird paradox is that we like to think that we're surrounded by people who want the best for us, but actually they want the best for us as we are right now. They want the you as you are right now to stay as you are right now. But if you change, then that can be a bit difficult. Not all the time, but a lot of the time you'll find that people will want, want to drag you back. And, I've had to extricate myself from various different friend engagements, for example, for the simple reason that um, I know that one of them is a that one of them is a smoker, one of them drinks, and so there's literally no point in me going out to hang out with them because it's going to be Christmas and New Year and stuff like that. And what's going to happen? Oh, just have a drink. You're going to be surrounded by people drinking and eating. Now, funny story, I'm still fasting, and uh, I've actually properly started a juice fast today. I'm going to make it. Oh, I just remembered I need to do a video on that. Anyway, um, so all of Christmas, throughout the whole Christmas, and I come from a Caribbean family, so there's meat everywhere. There's meat, there's cake, there's champagne, there's rum, there's everything. There's literally the whole table stacked with too much food. And I was sitting there with a cup of soup the whole time. And I didn't feel as if I needed to eat anything. And uh, that is exactly where I think people need to get when it comes to nicotine, is that once you're trying to do, once you're trying to quit nicotine, or once you're trying to quit cigarettes, or you know anything like that, the way that you know that you succeeded is that you can basically go out into those same environments and be like, oh, you know, hanging out with smokers again, if you want to, you can go out and not feel as if you have that pressure. And I think until you can really overcome that and, and until you can really get past that, it's better to extricate yourself from those situations whereby people can sometimes pressure you, sometimes passively, sometimes actively, and sometimes just not at all. It's just you just give in. And dealing with the dealing with the negative um, emotions and feelings that may come with it, which ultimately are real bullshit because it's like look who's more important you or like your progress or the program or, or the happiness of the you know or the happiness of the party i think you know which one takes precedent but anyway it's just been an interesting journey that's all i wanted to say for today because as usual when as i'm talking i'm thinking like every, like every sentence is worth its own video but i don't make i don't make videos anyway so what the hell am i talking about free man out and peace